much. Thank you, Charles. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I can't describe how excited we are here. You know, we're having, uh, even though a virtual a CA symposium in this strange and challenging year, that speaks a whole lot for us. In fact, uh, this is actually my first CA symposium, so I'm personally very excited. And thanks to the organizers for giving us this opportunity to present our work over here. So let me actually quickly uh, do, it's a fast pitch talk, I understand. So we are uh, gonna be uh, given a very short time over here, I believe about nine minutes or so. So let me quickly give you a little idea of what we're gonna speak about. Uh, you know, I just had the earlier uh, presenters, uh, very interesting presentation, talk about summer camps, cybersecurity summer camps. And that boy sounds very familiar, you know, in fact, uh, we actually had a similar situation. This year, we had a cybersecurity summer camp that we do every year in uh, Northern Kentucky in the greater Cincinnati area with the organization here for high schoolers. And this work that we're going to talk about actually was born out of that whole summer camp. You know, we are talking about an age of COVID-19 with virtual classes, you know, Zoom sessions where we have big audiences to cater to and the main challenge is to engage them. So the question is, how many of us actually face challenges doing summer camps? How many of us has to go back to the drawing board and rethink their strategies when you're doing summer camps? And especially you're trying to engage a big audience. So that's where we're gonna talk about the whole idea as we cutely call it the escape, the breakout room. I must say that this was a really fun project to work with along with my student Meg, who is actually here and she will be talking about, uh, in fact, she actually is the whole creator and, and the primary uh, developer of this whole uh, breakout room. But the idea is that if you're using a Zoom and you are actually having breakout rooms to engage students, how you can actually easily without having any sort of serious cyber challenges or any cyber background for your audience can sort of engage them. And that's what we are actually having over here is an escape the room style cyber challenge or cyber puzzle based game. So what we will do is without taking any more time, I will let my student and the creator of the game make kind of drive this. Uh, again, we might not have a chance to kind of test drive and play this game with you. We would love to do that, but because of time shortage, we would just give you a skim. And I think Meg will kind of give you an overview of what the game consists of. But I would like to just point out that if any of you would like to pilot this and try out in your next cyber camps or anywhere in your introductory cybersecurity classroom, please feel free to send out an email to us. It's still in a very much prototype stage, but we would love to actually let you try and, and pilot it for us. And I'll put my email and Meg's email in the chat window. So Meg, over to you. Thanks. Okay, can everybody hear me okay? Yes, yes we can. Great. And you can see my screen? All right. Um, yes, so but I'll you're not in, in um, presenter mode though, or oh, slide. Oh, that's okay, because I can't. Okay. It messes me up when I'm in person. All right, no problem. Bear with me. All right. So I'm a junior at NKU. Uh, I'm also a cybersecurity nerd and a creative type. And so I've been teaching for about five years with kids from K to 12, 12. And so if my slides are a little on the bright side, that's why, because they're into that. Okay. So, um, Um, so recently, uh, NKU has been focusing on doing like outreach and getting um, high schoolers involved in cybersecurity into our like cybersecurity um, new major. And so we had this inter-alliance camp, which is a group focused on getting teens involved and interested in IT, specifically cybersecurity in this instance. So we found ourselves tapped with sharing that with them and it was uh, kids from all the diff all these different schools none of them know each other uh, and for those of you who have had to piece together a curriculum uh, you probably know that there's actually a lot of material out there on the internet but anybody who's ever been on the internet also knows that the content you find is of varying degrees of, of quality and difficulty and accessibility um, and so having also taught high schoolers before, I also knew that they are professionals at looking bored, no matter what you throw at them. So there's also a voice in my head that said, um, find something fun for them to do and make them believe that you're cool. So I got taller. So, um, but of course, no class is like ever typical. And we had to uh, work with the lemons that 2020 has already given us. So it had to be virtual. 
Uh, everything's on Zoom. Everyone's using different equipment to access. Some are on phones, some are on tablets, Windows, Macs, everything. And nobody has the same software and nobody has the same computing powers. Like VM is out of the, and no VMs. Not, we're, we're not to that level. So, um, and in this case, since they're teenagers and they don't know each other, also we have to somehow get them to talk. So that's also a concern. Um, and then we have like the usual teaching issues, like everyone has different learning styles. Everybody, you know, there's the introverts, the extrovert, extroverts, some people are gonna be louder. So those are the usual concerns that we already have. Um, so we knew we had the, pro we knew what our problems were and now we had to decide what we were going, uh, what we were actually trying to accomplish. So what do we want our outcome to be? Um, do we wanna randomly throw cyber concepts at them Maybe a little bit, but it's that's not necessarily our main goal. It's kind of a, you know, we have to balance that. Um, we don't necessarily want to be like giving them more information than they can process at once. We just want to interest them. Um, so are we trying to stop the script kitties from turning to the dark side and becoming evil hackers? I mean, yeah, I guess that is also a goal, but um, not our main goal. In our group's case, Probably that was not likely anyway. Uh, so which leaves us with, oh, my slide's gonna go, this slightly annoying truism that we want the participants to understand um, that they can do anything they set their minds to. And though it's a little annoying, it's also an important thing to drive home to these teenagers and these beginners that um, they, even though they have different backgrounds and different training, we're telling them, we actually think you can do this. We think you already have the tools to solve problems. We can help you get started, right? We're drawing them in. Okay, um, okay, so we need a game that, okay, so now we, want from, we know what we want from our solution. So we need a game that works well with Zoom uh, requires no additional software, uh, a game that does not require much or any computer related training, a game that encourages creative thinking and teamwork. And we want people to attempt to solve problems even though it feels risky. Um, and a game that plays to different types of strengths and that encourages independent research. Let's see, when we first got tasked with this, um, I had recently seen a digital escape room that had been presented by my library. And it was not cyber related, but it was like, it fit the bill perfectly. They had no budget <laughs> and it was for teenagers and it was, you know, you just played it from your browser and that's what we needed. We needed something that everyone could do no matter what they were, um, what device they were using. Okay, so the game, I'm gonna tell you a little about the game now. Uh, the game follows the basic escape room concept if you've ever done it. Um, so you're trapped somewhere by sinister forces. In our case, it's a server room and we've been trapped by a deranged former CTO who's had a mental breakdown, not that anybody's ever heard of that happening, uh, who's bent on twisted yet strangely lighthearted revenge. Uh, and you have to escape the room and the way you escape is by using your brain to solve a series of puzzles, working your way through the storyline. Also in this case, your participants will be trapped in your Zoom meeting and don't take it personally, but you are the one who traps them there in their breakout rooms and forces them to think. Okay. Okay, so setting up the game, this can be done in different ways and all of these materials you can edit, you know, in PowerPoint or on any, whatever Word document you wanna use. And um, so if you have a script and a PowerPoint to guide your students through, uh, hopefully better than I'm doing with my PowerPoint right now. And we did this in groups of about four students. We also had the luxury of having a facilitator in each breakout room, uh, but you can do it so you can issue them the challenge in the main room and then have them break out into their separate rooms if you need to. Uh, but it's really just, you have to make it work for whatever group you have. So uh, this is a note about getting people to actually participate um, like I said, we were working with high schoolers, so that was definitely a factor. And you, if you're working with beginners, people are not always super keen to talk about things that they don't necessarily know. So you're gonna be relying on a few factors to drive participation. Uh, competitive people will already be ready to perform because if you have separate groups working towards the same goal, whether it's implied or actually stated, uh, to their mind, the first to escape is gonna be the winner. So some participants are actually gonna be quieter. And as a facilitator, it's kind of your job to guide them through the puzzles and to get everyone involved. And in my group, 
we had some very quiet voices. So we had to ask them, you know, directly, like, what do you think about this? Or what's your take? And the, in several instances, the quiet people actually already had the answer to the puzzle, but they didn't want to put themselves out there. So that, that was important. Uh, another thing about getting participants uh, to get the most out of the game, if you get into it, so will they. And this is, can be kind of difficult because part of the puzzles actually rhyme. And if you are not used to speaking in rhyme, it is incredibly awkward. And so you just kind of got to own that and go with it. And that helps them to feel more ready to put themselves out there as well. Um, let's see. And Megan, we're at the top of the hour too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me just. So just a quick, um, I know we are out of time here, but uh, we would love to kind of share and uh, let others try this out in the C community. That was the whole purpose here. So I have put my email in the chat box. Uh, we would love to share this game. Please send me an email and I'll be around as well. So please keep the questions coming. You know, I know we are short of time here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah so thanks, but sorry about the PowerPoint. <laughs> no, no, you great, did, did great with that. Thanks, Mike. That was great. Uh, thank you, Anchor and uh, and Megan. That was uh, that was that's, it. Looks like a really good exercise. Um, that is great. We appreciate that. Thank you for the show.